Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. A bit of a different one today, just uh, taking a bit of a walk. So as you guys probably know and are aware, you know, we, we, we produce a lot of content on the YouTube channel uh, and across X and in the Discord and Instagram and TikTok and, and just kind of everywhere, right? And one of the things that we found is we find ourselves sitting at the desk, you know, for a substantial amount of each day, every day since uh, 2020 pretty much. And so with traveling that we're trying to do a bit more of now as well, um, it's kind of become quite apparent just how unhealthy that is, uh, essentially. So what we're trying to do, uh, at least I am today anyway, is just trying to take a little bit of time out of the day to get some exercise in, right? And try to be a little bit more healthy. And um, so you know, go for a walk. I'm quite fortunate enough to live on the outskirts of a city where I can take advantage of of walks like this, uh, a bit of greenery. Obviously it's getting a bit colder now. Uh, so, you know, autumn is here in, in the UK and that's gonna pose a bit of a challenge trying to stay fit, but uh, nonetheless, I'm gonna try to take some time every day to kind of get out of the studio a little bit, right? And then we take a look at the YouTube channel just as an example. The amount of footage and uh, video content that we put out there is, is pretty insane. There's, there's not many channels out there that produce that amount of content in such a short space of time. And it, this isn't gonna change. We're pretty determined to kind of bring adoption and to educate people on blockchain technology and to kind of keep people informed about cryptocurrency and the cryptocurrency aspect of blockchain technology as well. So nothing is really changing from that kind of point of view, but a bit of a change of scenery maybe every now and again, take the camera with me, go for a walk, and, uh, and talk about cryptocurrency and talk about the, the current situation that you know, we find ourselves in on, on many of these different uh, blockchains, uh, such as Bitcoin, which is kind of the topic of today's video. Um, we do find that uh, uh, Bitcoin's been interesting, right? As I kind of put the video update out this morning, uh, some interesting kind of developments with, uh, with BTC's price action. We did see about $32 million of liquidations are on Bitcoin uh, over the last kind of 24 hours. Um, pretty substantial, but it's not, it's not a massive amount of liquidations overall that like we've seen bigger, right? So we do know that there was a bit of a liquidity grab going on. Uh, we are kind of talking about this not that long ago in terms of like short squeezes and stuff like that. So uh, a bit of a move to the upside, uh, lots of liquidity grabbed, $32 million uh, in the case of Bitcoin. Uh, I did have a short going yesterday, did get liquidated, so I was in that pool. <laughs> um, but you know, it's one of those, making sure you have good risk management and, and all that kind of good stuff. You don't want to kind of get caught out uh, by over leveraging yourself or exposing yourself to too much risk. And so I didn't, I got stopped out. It was about 20% uh, of my position. It's nothing major. And I can dust myself off and carry on. Uh, all in all, uh, I think it was about 87% of the 32 million were short positions that were, were basically liquidated out of the market. Again, nothing terribly too unusual, nothing uh, that we wouldn't necessarily kind of have expected uh, considering the scenario in which that kind of occurred, right? Essentially, we saw a big institutional candle come on in, big volume, spiked the price of Bitcoin to the upside and liquidated all those short positions. Again, nothing terribly unusual in those particular circumstances and actually 32 million in the grand scheme of things isn't a huge amount. So again, we're not too concerned about that, but it does change the outlook a little bit, at least on the smaller time frames, right? We can see that the smaller time frames still have the potential to push up a little bit further to the upside. It doesn't really distract me from the bigger picture though. And when we start taking a look at the bigger picture, we can of course see that whale wallets, these are wallets that have over a thousand Bitcoin in them, are in fact down 5.65% in the last uh, 365 days. So over the last year, they are down. And that essentially means that these large institutional level investors have been coming out of the space, not coming in. This isn't something new. This is something that we talk about all the time on the channel. Something that our members are very aware of down in the Discord. If you're not a member, you should go check that out. Link it down below. Um, and yeah, for the most part, we do see um, some interesting uh, things happening at the retail layers as well. Okay, specifically 
when we start thinking about retail investors and whether they are buying or selling, right? Because there's always a buyer and there's always a seller. And actually we see things are very, very flat over the last 30 days when it comes to retail investors. Um, and this is not a good thing um, for the price action of, of Bitcoin. It's an indication that we might be starting to see um, essentially money and liquidity running out at the retail layer. Okay. We often talk about retail layers and institutional layers, right? When it comes to um, kind of the wallet counts, um, who's buying and who's selling, right? Uh, we have smart money, which is typically uh, referred to as your institutional investors. And then you have dumb money, which is typically referred to as your retail investor. And I think I may have taken a wrong turn here. <laughs> I've kind of gone off the beaten track a little bit. Um, but yeah, so essentially you've got your retail investors, you've got your um, institutional investors, you've got your smart money, dumb money, right? And we aren't really seeing the institutional investors coming on in, um, and we are not seeing retail investors selling or buying. Uh, it's very, very flat. Uh, a 0% increase or decrease in the last 30 days. Um, so again, we see the volatility in price, and you can see things happening at kind of a trading level, but you don't really see it from the longer term investor point of view. And that could be problematic for the price action of BTC in the kind of short to medium term. So with whales being down and retail, uh, retail investors growth being basically stagnant and just kind of flat, uh, we have to consider what that might mean for the price action of BTC, okay? We have to consider that in order for retail investors to come in, uh, there's gonna be having to be someone who's selling Bitcoin or Bitcoin's price has to move down uh, for retail investors to be enticed into providing liquidity. But the same is also true for the institutional level investor. I think I'm gonna go back down this way um, because the institutional level investor is also looking for Bitcoin to buy and they have to be buying it or they want to be buying it at the right price, right? Specifically if they're buying it in volume. So we have to consider if the retail investor isn't necessarily or doesn't necessarily have the liquidity to continue buying, maybe they're going to start wanting liquidity for their day-to-day -day lifestyles, right? We already see a bit of a squeeze on lifestyle choices and things like that in terms of um, inflation and interest rates causing problems for the day-to-day -day living. People trying to have lifestyles that maybe they can no longer afford. And so typically what you tend to find is that these particular investors tend to end up selling assets to sustain a lifestyle that they can't afford. So if institutional investors are looking for Bitcoin at the right price and retail investors are starting to run out of liquidity, chances are that those retail investors are going to be looking to sell their assets which means the institutional investors could be about to get what they want, essentially cheaper Bitcoin that they can start buying up. Okay, so we're gonna start seeing this in the data soon, I would have thought, um, as times get harder for the retail investor. But there's something else that's in the background here that we also need to be aware of, that the US government are now among the largest Bitcoin holders. They have over $5 billion of BTC uh, at their disposal. Now, if the US government decide that they do want to kind of bring the price of Bitcoin down, they definitely have the capability of doing so. So we wanna be very aware, depending on the level of corruption that you believe sits at the, at the US government, uh, whether that's the SEC, all the way through to the White House, right? There's a lot of issues there. With $5 billion at their disposal in Bitcoin, they could absolutely destroy the crypto space if they wanted to. Because Bitcoin's move to the downside would be catastrophic for the altcoins. So we wanna be quite aware of that. So with a need, in most in my opinion, for Bitcoin to retest kind of 22 to $23,000, I think we might actually start to see that. And that uh, particular level is a CME gap on the daily chart. A CME gap is something that essentially is the difference between a daily closed position and a daily open position on the futures market. So historically speaking, most CME gaps that are left behind, i.e. that difference between open and close, or close and open, um, gets filled out, meaning liquidity can, tends to go down there. Price likes to go and fill that gap out. And so we've got that gap at 20 to $21,000. Uh, we have Elliott Way theory saying 22 to $23,000. And we can see that essentially there's not a lot of liquidity left from retail investors. That there's probably going to be a retest of that level. 
How price reacts at that level is going to be quite key and pretty important to the future price action of BTC. Because if Bitcoin doesn't hold that support level of $20,000, there isn't really a lot to stop it going back down to $17,000 and of course $15,000 and a new bear market low. So there's a lot to play for here from a retail investor point of view. If you're keeping an eye on the data and you're aware of all kind of movements that are going on with Bitcoin and particularly the altcoins as well, you could be making a pretty significant portfolio out of what is potentially going to come. So I think I'm going to leave this video there. Just a bit of a, an idea of pay attention because if you don't, I think you're going to miss out on probably one of the biggest wealth transfers in crypto history. So if you have found this video useful, informative, smash the like button, I appreciate that. If you're new, subscribe. And if you haven't joined us in Discord, you should probably check that out. Link is down below. Until the next one though, guys, have a fantastic day. Thank <laughs> you.